question answer video. I've never done a video like this before. We'll see how it goes. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I asked you all to give me some questions. It doesn't have to be about maps. It can be about anything. I have no secrets. Uh, you came up with some really great questions, and here they are. So prepare yourself for my least popular video of all time. Yes, I'm surrounded by inspiration. I mean, I get inspiration from my kids, the ideas that they have, the drawings that they do. I get inspired from nature, just looking around. I get inspired from the work that I see people do, the maps that they make and the processes that they share. It's awesome. And I think there's a lot of power in that. And when I see a map that's really just knocks my socks off and I think, gosh, I like, how do they even like, it's impossible. And then they're generous enough to share the steps that they took in making it one step at a time and people can do it. And it demystifies the process, fills me with hope, gives me encouragement to do the same thing. And I like doing that for others. I mean, frankly, that's the most fun that I have nowadays is sharing the process even more than making the maps themselves. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from work of the past. So artists of the past, but especially cartographers of the past. And I get a lot of inspiration specifically from the David Rumsey map library. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. Just when I think I've really done something new and cool and snazzy and special and oh man, Nelson, you nailed it. You got this one. You invented something. Nope. I'll find it done 150, 200 years ago by somebody in a statistical atlas of France or something like that. Anyway, um, there's nothing new under the sun. It's all been done before. You know, maybe. Um, but it's, re it's really inspiring. So inspiration comes from all over the place. That actually was a pretty complex process, but I had kind of worked out the idea for it over the years without ever actually trying it. And a lot of the motivation came from, or inspiration came from colleague and friend Wes Jones on the Living Atlas team with me. He made a blog post uh, called something like how to make sci-fi contours. And he used 3D with no background. And I thought, oh, it's kind of cool how they the contours elevate off. And then I saw the AI art and I could see that everything was just kind of smeared vertically offset. And I knew that if I trace things to uh, contour polygons that I could do that offset smearing. Yeah, just kind of, and, but like how long does it take? Um, a lot of the things I make never see the light of day, never go anywhere. Uh, they're just little diversions that don't pan out or sometimes I'll return to an old diversion that didn't pan out and say actually you know why didn't I circle up on this and finish it and I do so um, I don't have a <laughs> very unsatisfying answer to a good question how long does it take me and how do I know when I'm up um, it's just a lot of goofing around I leave myself time for open-ended play I'm not just playing all day but I carve out time actively I reserve it for experimentation and play and trying out new things it's important it's called professional development and it enriches all the other aspects of the work that I do the famous Ken Field I would say the infamous Ken Field Dr. Kenneth Field it's great he's a great friend he's a wonderful collaborator he's funny He's sarcastic, he gives good advice, uh, and he's very loyal. So a lot of the, a, a big part of the reason why I have the job that I do at Esri is because of Kenfield. A long time ago, um, like 10 years ago now almost, I reached out to Ken in a state of, uh, I was unsatisfied at my previous job and it was kind of at the end of, end of the line there. And I said, hey, Ken, if you ever see anything that looks like it would be a good fit for me at Esri, let me know and I'll maybe I'll apply for it. And I think he took my resume and just chopped it all over town and um, was, a, was a really strong advocate for me. And maybe he regrets that terribly, but I don't think so. I think Ken likes me. We're good friends. Um, it's great. He's a wonderful fellow. short answer is no. 
I don't. I'm not part of that team. It's a great team, wonderful folks, and I like pestering them from time to time with weird ideas and stuff. And invariably, they'll say, actually, you can do this, and here's how, which is awesome. Um, but however, I will say a little bit. So years ago, they reached out and said, hey, can you make some Firefly symbols for us to use in ArcGIS Online? I was like, yes, here you go. So that was exciting. I contributed to that. You can find them if you dig around in the point symbology options. There's, there's a Firefly category in there. Um, and then the other symbology that I have contributed, and this was kind of a fun surprise, was a number of years ago, Mark Harrower here at Esri said, hey, John, do you have any um, hatched fill patterns that you like to use in ArcGIS Pro? We're working on things in ArcGIS Online along those lines. I was like, yeah, along those lines. And I said, yeah, here's a style that I use. I gave them a style with them. And they appeared in, in ArcGIS Online's map viewer as the options that you can pick for choosing a hatched fill pattern. That was exciting, that was fun. But other than that, no, I don't really have any say over there. I make maps because I must. Took me a while to realize that. So the backstory is I went to university not really knowing what I wanted to do or be because why would I at the age of 18? Who's got that figured out? I took a bunch of classes and I took this intro to computerized cartography and GIS class and I saw the dots sprinkle in for a dot density map that we had to do for a lab and it was magical to me. I was like, this is great. And it seemed to merge things that I had been raised interested in. Um, I grew up loving art. I'd sit in my room all by myself and paint and draw, watch Bob Ross endlessly. And we would, uh, my, my parents were both teachers. My dad was a geography teacher and my mom was a geography teacher and also an art teacher. And uh, we, we'd just drive around the country every summer and my dad would take slides to use in his courses and he would use my mom as scale for like slip faults and stuff like that like stand there chris wave um and it was great it was a great life and um cartography seemed like a, a merge of those two big interests of mine it just felt right and that's when i knew i signed a major right away um career wise oh, i bounced i mean I've had a couple stints of being unemployed after school, but my first full-time job was with uh, the Wampanoag tribe in Massachusetts um, doing GIS, which was great, a lot of fun. I was there for one year just because you don't have a, I didn't have a long-term future there. I couldn't afford anything. It turned out to be the most expensive county in the United States. I learned later, couldn't buy a house there. Went back to school to Central Michigan University. More of the same, geographic information science was my master's degree. And then I worked for a startup in Lansing, Michigan, um, doing data visualization for the web when it was relatively new. Um, and it was kind of, it, it wasn't kind of, it was totally a thrill doing data visualizations, coming up with ways of making interfaces on the internet. You know, like what, when you slide the slider, do you zoom in or do you, do you zoom out? Do you put it up and down? Like, is there a button? We had to invent all that stuff and it was a blast. Um, I was there for 12 years until it was time to go. I work on the best team at Esri, which is the Living Atlas. I love it. It's so fun. It's glorious. I got here, uh, man, I've been here almost, no, over nine years. I came here in October of 2015. Whoa, and I still feel kind of new, which is weird, but true. I still feel kind of new. Um, how did I land my job? Uh, like I said, I, I uh, sent Ken an email and then I think he did a ton of work in the background and I got an interview and I came out to Redlands and I, I did the interview circuit for two days. Whew, was that exhausting, uh, but exhilarating. Um, I'll tell you, I, I think the reason I got the job is because I had an accidental portfolio online in the form of blog posts for data visualization that I had made. Because at my previous job, I was really unsatisfied. I'd been there for so long and I was solving the same kind of problems over and over again. And 
the business itself was getting more and more specific because you follow the money and it was uh and i I just i wasn't terribly satisfied Um, i didn't have a lot of time i felt to follow up on my own hunches and and uh, do my own creative work because we were always doing bespoke work for customers and i've learned the hard way that it's important to like i said carve out time for professional development open-ended play and experimentation and trying things hindsight you know what it what what if we had time to try this for that customer even though they didn't want it or we didn't have time? Um, that's so important to do. And I was bouncing off the walls over there and I finally came to Esri because um, I was going to leave that job and then I thought, why would I leave this job? A, what a snob you are, John, to not be satisfied with this job that you have um, doing visual work and getting paid for it. And I thought I was trapped there because my specialty was so specific, usability, um, UX design, and data visualization and and cartography. Uh, Nobody else is gonna hire me to do something like that. You're here, this is it. This is the one job you can have. Stop being unsatisfied, shame on you. Um, Which is kind of, uh, I was in a bad spot. Um, And it was, uh, I I was, I was going to leave and I thought, well, why leave when I can just start doing whatever I want until they fire me? And I just started making data visualizations and blog posts and doing it there um, at work. Um, And and it turned out they they liked that. It worked out for them because it gave them visibility and that kind of thing. But the result of it was I had this accidental portfolio that when it was time to go to Esri, I could just point to that and say, look at all these visualizations I did. Most of them were just for fun because I was curious. Which is, uh, which is nice, I think, to hear if you're interviewing somebody. So that's how I got here. No, uh, I haven't. Not seriously. I'm a father, and being a father to kids is its own mentorship program. It takes a lot of my time, which, of course, is the best way to spend my time, but also an enormous amount of energy. And uh, the prospect of creating a mentorship program hasn't really appealed to me. I I mean, I also mentor a student in the school district here, but that's not for GIS or mapping or anything. Although, this Thursday we are going to draw pirate maps together, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, No, but no mentorship. Part of me, because I, I have teaching in me, I want to teach, I want to be a teacher. My parents were both teachers and uh, I admire that and I think there's like an itch in me that wants to teach and I found that making these videos is so satisfying and it it gratifies that um, urge in me to teach. So maybe this is like my kind of weird mentorship program. (laughs) Well, I get frustrated all the time. Um, it just doesn't stick with me a whole lot. I don't know. Maybe it's part of my wiring, uh, how I was raised or, you know, how I've grown. But, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely have frustrating experiences and sometimes I handle it better than others. But you ask specifically about the time I was deplaned four times on my way to the user conference this year. Uh, I've never been deplaned once. Like everything was going wrong. Oh, sorry, our engine has an issue. Oh, sorry, we need to do this. Oh, we don't have enough crew to off the plane off. It was crazy. Spent the night in O'Hare. And um, fortunately, and maybe not coincidentally, I was reading a book at the time, which is The Journals of Lewis and Clark. I recommend it. It's amazing. But uh, there are harder ways and more taxing circumstances to to cross a constant continent i was traveling across a whole continent i can spend the night in o'hare i'll be okay so anyway just that kind of perspective i suppose university discord that actually makes me feel slightly relevant i love it uh i need to actually learn more about discords and maybe even use them people have said i should start a discord I'm just so lazy. I'm just so lazy. Um, the most obscure geoprocessing tool. There are so many geoprocessing tools. There's 
a kajillion geoprocessing tools. The trick is like finding the right one based. Um, ChatGPT is actually pretty good. If you ask it what you want to do, see if there, ask it if there's a geoprocessing tool that relates to your task, if you describe your task pretty well. Um, the I have an answer for you, and this was a this was a cool one. It was called the shape index tool, I think. Shape index. And it would tell me how round something was. <laughs> Is it round? And it would be like zero to a hundred. Not round, totally round. And you might think, what a weird tool. Well, the reason I was using it is because I was making a map of all the lakes in Michigan with the name Round, Round Lake. And generally they're pretty round, especially compared to other lakes like Crooked Lake. They're actually pretty crooked. Round lakes are actually pretty round and I could measure using GIS how round they were. Um, why would anybody want a tool like that other than mapping lakes? I think you could use it for busting gerrymandering, getting a sense for political districts if they are are really non-compact. Ideally, they're super compact, but I mean, political districting is this impossible puzzle and you'll never get perfectly compact things, but this is a tool that might help you detect ones that are really egregious. I do all my work on the same computer. It's a Dell Precision 7770 laptop. And it's kind of a big beefy laptop. I just looked up the specs and it's pretty expensive. It's an expensive laptop, 3,000 something dollars. Um, I'm lucky to have it because it was time to get a new laptop. I had had mine for many years and um, I, I got one of the behind the stage presentation laptops that the Esri user conference team uses for the plenary. So like no risk involved. This is a serious laptop and I got one of those. Which is great. I was really, I lucked out. We all do that. Any maker will, who's been making long enough, will take a look back at the stuff that they've made in the past and go, Ooh, I would have done something differently. I was so proud of that. Um, that's okay. You're right to have been proud of it and you should still be proud of it. Um, as we go, we're always adding different tricks and, you know, tips to our toolbox and we're getting better and better. At least we have more options available to us to use more tools. And the, the work that we do has a little bit more nuance, has a little bit more perspective. We've learned what not to do from experience. And um, also it's when you look back and, and you see your work and you cringe, other people aren't cringing and they weren't cringing then. We're our own worst critics, the toughest critics. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. It's, it's going to happen. Anybody who makes long enough is going to know that they would have done something differently when they look back at what they had made in the past. That's okay. I mean, I do it with parenting for crying out loud. Chili, I'm not picky. If I'm eating chili, I'm enjoying chili. I don't have a favorite recipe. Chili is my favorite recipe for chili. It's kind of like how I am with coffee. Uh, a lot of people are really specific or fussy about coffee. It's just so much easier not to be fussy about coffee. Ooh, this coffee is bitter. I like it. Ooh, this coffee is weak. I like it. Oh, this coffee is strong. I like it. If I'm drinking coffee, it's because I want to drink some coffee. I'm not too fussy about how it tastes. It's all good. Um, oh, this coffee is burned and old. Sure, bring it on. Um, my favorite projection the projection I like a lot is Elber's equal area. It's a conical projection, conic, and it's it's contours or it, the sweep of it is just beautiful. It's really nice for moderate scale maps, continental maps. I use it for the United States all the time, but you can customize its parameters to use it all over the place. Elber's, thank you, Elber's. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Man, who lasted this long? Is anyone still watching this video? If you have any more questions, <laughs> I guess maybe maybe put them in the comments section. I can use this Q&A as a seed for another Q&A, but I doubt anybody will actually want to watch that Q&A. But maybe. Who knows? Thanks for watching.